Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I can take my mask off. That's right. Thanks, Bruce. <laughs> well, we're uh, small in number this morning. Um, does anybody know to the contrary? Are we allowed to sing? They said in pubs and clubs we can't, but weddings were allowed to sing and dance. So I guess the singing would be in the church. Nothing? Okay. Well, then I guess we can sing and everybody at home, you can follow your own COVID guidelines. <laughs> and I'm sure you can sing in your own homes. Um, okay, that's good. So Bruce will be continuing the series in the Shorter Catechism this morning. Um, questions 73 to 81. You've got a, a few questions to cover there, Bruce. So um, we look forward to that. Uh, but right now, I think we'll start off by singing, or if you're uncomfortable with that, hum. <laughs> okay. Heavenly Father, as we mark the beginning of a new year, help us look at the world around us and open our eyes to see you. Lord, you created all things with just a word. We praise you for your love. You sent the Holy Spirit to comfort us, and as our Heavenly Father, you take the time to listen to us and are able and willing to deal with our daily needs. Lord, we praise you as you graciously sustain the world you have created by the power of your word. Yet we confess throughout the past week, we have stumbled, and we have said things we shouldn't, and done things we shouldn't, and even thought things that may have hurt others and offended you. We thank you for your forgiveness and abundant grace. Lord, you have set us free from all our fears. Lord, as we ask for the courage that we might take your word out into the community and workplaces with your confidence. Lord, we pray in the name of our King and Savior, Jesus, who willingly gave his life for ours. Amen. In the Roots and Branches, we have a Roots and Branches that uh, Damien has put be together before he went away. I think the announcements are mainly from last week, or maybe not. But there's some announcements in there anyway. COVID-19 rules are constantly changing. So we don't know what they are really, but we did sing. We are singing today. Maybe we won't next week. Um, the message for us is if we are feeling sick, please stay home. Um, or like I was last week, um, self-isolating. And Ibrahim is today, I believe. I think Olga has contracted um, COVID, uh, his message said. So hopefully Ibrahim and Nadra are well and safe there. Um, and if you do contract it, hopefully it's the Omicron one, which seems to be better than a booster, so they say, and it's not too bad for your, for your health. So um, let's go with that. Masks will be, again we need to be worn indoors until the end of January. That's the date we have on that one, which we are doing. That's great. Every Sunday, there is a time of prayer in the church hall uh, for half an hour before church starts. Um, everyone is welcome between 8.45 and 9.15. Um, there's also a list out in the foyer that um, if you are prepared to volunteer for this year, um, please put your name down. Um, even if you're just thinking about it, put it down there and have a chat with Damien or, or somebody to, if you can help anywhere. Um, we're going to postpone the start of morning tea until the end of January as a precaution. January, so he's away down in the snowy, I think, somewhere today. And he's a ginger buying here. Lovely. That should be uh, much nicer than our humid weather at the moment, I guess, down there. Are there any other announcements we need to make? Nope. All right, I'd like to invite Ruth for today's kids talk. I've got some friends today. He 
you guys will probably recognize them from home. Yeah. What's this teddy bear wearing? Goggles. Got some goggles, a nice leather hat and a jacket. We'll take them to the back. What do you think he might be dressed up to do? Yeah? To be a pilot. So he's got everything on that he needs to be a pilot. Who do we think this one is? A nurse. Yeah, she's a nurse. She's an older nurse. Nurses don't usually dress like this anymore, but she's a nurse. She's got her little hat on, got her shawl around her, and her dress. That would be a girl nurse. Oh, I've got another nurse here. One who works in the emergency room. Yeah, so, well, a, a nurse. I think it's a nurse one, but we can say it's a doctor too, probably. All right, look, what's this one got on? Yep, got a hat. Cover the fur so no fur gets in the way when they're doing the operation. What about this? Yeah? Got a face mask on to stop any germs getting in or getting out. And then got the scrubs on to be all protected and dressed well for doing the operation. So we've got three, three bears here all dressed up in what they need to do their jobs. I've got one more bear here. Can you see this one? What's this bear dressed up in? Can you guess? Yeah, have a guess, Elsie. Yeah, it's a warrior. Yeah, yeah. And he's dressed up in his armor. He's got his helmet and shield and a sword and his belt. And he's all dressed up, ready to fight. So all of these bears have what they need to do the job that they're going to do. And in the Bible, God tells us that he gives us all the things that we need to do what he wants us to do. Is that all the things, That's all the things, yeah. He gives us all we need because sometimes as a Christian, life can be difficult. And sometimes as as a Christian, we need to go out and we need to stand up for God. We're not going to do it with a real sword and a shield, but God gives us a picture that it's like he gives us armour, that he gives us the things we need to go out and live for him. So today, we're going to look at one part of the armour that he talks about. God tells us about the belt. And he calls it the belt of truth. So what we learn from that is that God gives us his truth to help us through life. That's no, though Goliath was a soldier. Okay. So God gives us his truth. Can anyone tell me, without being too philosophical, what does it mean when something is true? What do you think? I mean, when something's true, yeah? It's truthful. What else do you think? What does it mean when something's true? If I'm telling the truth, what does that mean? Yeah? You're not lying, okay? I'm not telling a lie. I'm telling you what is real what really happened so if you two have a little say sometimes if you have a little argument and someone goes ah they hit me and i say can you go sit down Jen? and i say are you telling me the truth that means i want you to tell me what really happened so why can we trust god to tell us what's true what do you think jonah Why can we trust God to tell us what's really true? That's okay. That was a hard question. Do you have any ideas, Elsie? Well, 
God made the whole world, didn't he? God, and he knows everything that has happened and that will happen. And we know that God is love and God is truth. So when God tells us something, we can trust him that it is true. So why do we need God's truth? Well, God tells us that when we know the truth, it will actually set us free. It can set us free from things like worry. If we think, oh, I'm lonely, things aren't going well, oh, well, God's truth tells us that God will never leave us. God will never forsake us. God's truth, if we feel lonely and like no one likes us, God's truth tells us that he knows us and loves us. And most importantly, God gives us the truth to set us free from sin and death. So some people might say, oh, I can go to heaven because I'm a good person. Or if you believe in something, I can go to, you can go to heaven. That will do. Just believe in anything. But God's word gives us the truth. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to God the Father except through me. So the Bible tells us the truth about how we can be with God and how we can be free. Free from the door each day. If we believe in Jesus, we have all that truth that God has told us to help us go and live our lives for him. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your truth. Thank you that you are truth. Thank you that we can learn what you have told us in your word and that it can help us to live our lives for you. We pray for the children of our church, those who are here today, and for those who may be away. We pray for all of them, that they will read your truth in your word and that they will come to trust in you and that your truth will help them to live each day for you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Ruth. I'd like to invite Ruth up to lead us in um, our congregational prayer this morning. Let's get things cleaned up. I also hear that Haley uh, Jamison has contracted COVID as well, and that's why the Jamisons are at home. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to. Uh, oops, sorry, Greg and Robin. Hopefully, they're well too. Hey. Yeah, good morning. Hello. Phone call from Robin this morning saying, pray for Hayley and her family. <laughs> That's uh, Greg and Robin's uh, daughter because she's come down with COVID. Um, and uh, and, um, and Ibrahim uh, texted me this morning saying, uh, yeah, Olga is too. So that's why they're staying home because they have been in contact with her days ago, but, you know, there's... Just that unknown time. So, yes. I think the message is if you've been in close contact with someone, just whoa, <laughs> like Nick and Janet had to do all last week and that. And uh, if you do have symptoms, they'll go and get tested, isn't it? Okay. So, congregational prayers. We've got the list here, apart from Olga and Hayley. Who else can we pray for? For any other items and issues? She's, what was that, Betty? Oh, yes. It's a nursing home. Locked in, okay. Okay, Mari Harrison, for those who know Mari, um, yeah, she's in lockdown in her nursing home, so we pray for her. Yeah, yeah, it's up here. 
It's one of the points. Thanks for that reminding me. Yes. Yeah, how's Catherine? It's a good price point then. Yes. <laughs> Okay, let's come before our Lord with our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for all those in our church family who are at this time suffering from sickness and or injury. There's many of us not here today. And um, that could be the reason for much of it. Plus also holiday time. And we pray for all those from our church who are out and about on holidays, you keep them safe on the roads and at the beaches and places like that, Lord, and, and bring them all home back here again. And um, thank you, Lord, that uh, Kath, Catherine and her fiance, Jordan, uh, have recovered from the COVID um, disease which they have had. We praise you for that. But our prayers are also for Ibrahim and Nadra's daughter, Olga, who is suffering at this time from COVID, and we pray that you would heal her. And for Greg and Robin's daughter, Haley, and her flatmates that she's with, who all have COVID at this time. We also pray for comfort for Eddie and his family as his brother passed away this week. We pray, Lord, that you would, yeah, as it says, comfort them. We pray for Betty Asante as she also recovers from her shoulder injury, or surgery should be, really. We also pray for the youth in our church that they would continue to be strengthened and, and grow in you, Lord. We also pray for the Sunday school. We know they're all on break at the moment, Lord, but um, we pray that next year, that, or this year, that you will send us more children to teach and to teach well your word. We also pray for Mari Harrison, an older member of our church who is in lockdown at this stage in her nursing home. We pray for that nursing home and its safety too, Lord. We pray for... these people. In Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Herma, would you like to come up and um, read for us? Sorry? I'm sure you don't need to clean the problem. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. Adam made love to his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favour on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favour. So Cain was angry and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not, I'm sorry, but if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? That was good planning, wasn't it? Hey? <laughs> Let's come before our Lord and pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, Almighty God, I pray that uh, the sermon that I have here this morning for your people, uh, that it'll be correct and true. We know your words from the Bible are correct and true, those that I will present, and I just pray that I can link it all together in a right and meaningful way, Lord, and our ears are there to open and hear, and that we can do and continue to do what you suggest, what you command, what you desire. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity today to, to preach to your people, your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, welcome. Welcome out there, Zoom land, or uh, YouTube later in the day or week. Welcome. Last week, Damien looked at the commandments five, six, and seven, and the, the questions that went with those. And today we look at eight, nine, and 10 and finish them off. And we look at and see how, how they reveal, how we're to love each other. <laughs> what our duty is, our duty is to love. And it also, uh, it'll reveal how far we fall short and what can happen and what we can do about that and what God has done about that. So last week, Damien looked at fifth, preserving the honour of parents and others. Sixth, preserving the life of self and the life of others. And seventh, preserving our own and our neighbour's chastity. Well, let's move on. And what we're going to look at is the last three, the eighth, which is furthering our wealth lawfully. Nine, maintaining and promoting truth of self and others. And 10, the 10th commandment, contentment in our condition. There you go. Huh? Oh, in other words, stealing, lying, and coveting. <laughs> so let's look at the eighth commandment. Basically, stealing in a nutshell. We know it's wrong because. It robs. It robs our, our neighbour of what God has given him. God's given us everything. And we steal, we rob, we take from what God has given that person, whether you agree with it or not. And secondly, stealing is wrong because it is a sin, not only against that person, but against God himself. Yeah, by not being content with the lot that God has, has given you. So if you're not content with what God's given you, you go, it's mine. <laughs> mm. It is unbelief because we refuse to trust God's providence or providing for us. Okay, we, we can recognise. We can recognise robbery. We can recognise theft. There's so many great movies and cop shows on it. You know, it's not hard to recognise, is it? I'm not going to go and list them all. I'll be here all day. But money and goods are stolen. You think, yeah, well, that's robbery, that's, that's theft. And, but, but there's plenty of others, isn't there? Just looking at a few things that we can steal. People, we can steal people. What? Slavery. That's stealing people. It's wrong. Property, we just went through. What about someone's reputation? Can we steal that? Their dignity or their trust? Not just their ID on their bank card or whatever. What about intellectual property? No, oh, now we're starting to get down, aren't we? Yeah, we can see the money and the goods, but intellectual property? This form of theft includes anything from copying software or films, downloading music or movies that you haven't paid for, or stealing a person's words, plagiarism, in other words. Well, this is right, and in, it is right, and it is important that if you are going to use a person's words, that you cite them. Cite the source of where you got that from. That, that idea or that quote. And if you don't, well, what are you doing? You're really stealing that quote or idea from that person who came up with it. And what you're saying, 
by quoting something, by citing it, you're basically stating that you value truth over ego. Because if you don't cite it, then people think, oh, he's wise, he says that. <laughs> but if you, st you state it, you're just stating the truth, uh, citing it. So, by the way, that was a quote from the Bible study tools.com <laughs> that's where i got that idea from <laughs> do you get the idea because if i didn't you go oh yeah bruce has really thought about that <laughs> i read it uh, martin luther see here's another quote another it's not me it's martin luther he says if we look at mankind in all its conditions it is nothing but a vast Wide stable full of great thieves. <laughs> Look around. No, sorry. <laughs> yes, we all fail. We fail ourselves. We fail our neighbours. And, of course, we fail God himself. Well, everyone, everyone is guilty of this commandment. Because we rob God of the praise that he deserves. Whole sermons could be written on this, couldn't they? <laughs> well, I'm going to move on to the next one. The ninth commandment, about lying. I'm going to read, read you a little bit out of Proverbs now. Okay. Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. There's two reasons why we give a, a memory of a, a, a verse, like where it's from. One, it shows that this is where I got it from. And two, if you want to go back and look at it later. Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. There are six things the Lord hates. Seven, they are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed blood, innocent blood, yeah. A heart that dece uh, de devises, sorry, wicked schemes. Feet that are quick to rush into evil. A false witness who pours out lies and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. <laughs> Isn't that amazing there? Lying, false witness. From this, we can see God hates lying in any form. It is impossible for God to lie. That's in Hebrews 6.18. Also, let's have a look. John 8.44. What does that say about it? Interesting. You belong to the father, the devil, and you, carry, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, back in Cain and Abel's day, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Wow. Let's compare that to what Ruth said today. Jesus said in John 14, 16, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Big contrast, isn't there? When we lie, we behave more like the children of the devil than children of God. God says to the liar, this is found in Psalm 101, 7, no one who practices deceit will dwell in my house. No one who speaks falsely will stand in my presence. Well, so we're out there and we are to promote truth. Matthew Henry, the old guy that wrote all those commentaries years ago, what he happens to say, he says, the commentator says about... Um, that the 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 um the commandment the ninth commandment this is what it forbids speaking falsely in any matter and in any way devising and designing to deceive our neighbor mm. speaking unjustly against our neighbor to the prejudice of his reputation See, I don't speak like that, but he does. That's why I quoted him. <laughs> no, no slandering and in any way uh, 
in uh, endeavoring to raise our own reputation upon the ruin of our neighbors. That's what Matthew Henry happened to say. And when you look at it, it's all about lying, isn't it? And what it does. That is to drag others down while we're building ourselves up falsely. Again, we all fall, fall short of that one. Which brings us to the 10th commandment. Not to covet anything of my neighbours. That is from all people, really, because Jesus gave us a parable on that, who is my neighbour? Even the Samaritan. <laughs> Coveting is idolatry. Hmm? Where does it say that? Well, let's look again. The book of Colossians, verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 5. It says, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs, belongs to the earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Straight out of the Bible. When you do study and you do write a sermon, you look at the Bible, yes, and you look at commentaries. The Zondervan Study Bible, what does it state about this? Because they, they say it in such a way that it's just so, so right too. It says, greed suggests a desire to have more. It has a much wider significance than its English equivalent, denoting a ruthless desire for and an intense seeking after material things. That's what being, that's what coveting is. Including, included in it is an entire disregard of the rights of others. This attitude is identified with idolatry because it puts self-interest and earthly things in the place of God. Coveting. Idolatry. Another website I found, harvest.org, states that coveting is a powerful and unestimated sin. Interesting, isn't it? It can cripple you spiritually and ultimately destroy you. Well, covetousness and greed often go hand in hand. You think, is there any signs? Where, where can we pick up anything in the Bible on coveting? Well, how about for 30 pieces of silver? Judas betrayed Jesus. <laughs> Need I say more? Well, let's look at Timothy. 1 Timothy, chapter 6 to 10. The godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and a, and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. This is all straight out of the Bible. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Straight from God's word. Need I say more? Coveting. Not good for us. Not good for our neighbours. Nor does it bring in any glory to God. And again, we've fallen there too. Haven't we? You might be thinking, well, bad people go to hell, don't they? Only those bad ones, you know? Those that murder, you know, like Hitler or Bin Laden or Martin Bryant or, or one of those who murdered the 400 people in Australia each year. You read about 400 people in Australia each year are murdered. Yes, that's how many. Only those sorts of people. They're, they're, they're the ones that would be going to, 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 wouldn't get to heaven. And compared to those people, hey, you're pretty good, aren't you? 
But whose standard matters here? <laughs> Community standards, your standard? Yeah. Whose standard matters? How about God's standard? The maker of the universe, the sustainer of life, the one we owe our existence to. His standard is the one that matters. Let's just have a look at some of the Ten Commandments um, and see how we stack up. Now, we've just been through three, and I'm sure you're thinking, yeah, don't stack up too well there. Well, let's have a look. I'm going to ask you a few questions. You don't have to answer them verbally. In your head, it's fine. Have you ever told a lie? <laughs> I can see some nodding out there. Well, who hasn't? <laughs> well, that makes you a liar, doesn't it? It's a bit harsh. Yeah, well, probably not lately, but maybe as, even as a kid. Uh, well, that makes you a thief. And you're going, hang on, hang on. I don't make that as a living. Well, how many murders does it take for someone to be called a, murder, a murderer? <laughs> is that right? You murder one person, you're labelled as a murderer. <laughs> Why is it any different? You told one lie, you're a liar. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's let's keep on. We're not going too well, are we? You're all right then. Okay. Ever use God's name <laughs> to curse? Okay. You blasphemer. Well, you say, I haven't murdered anyone. Or, I got that one. <laughs> I haven't murdered anyone. No. Well, let's read. 1 John chapter 3, verse 15. This is what it says. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer. Huh? And you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. Well, across that one too, I asked the question, have you hated a brother or sister? <laughs> what did Jesus say in uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 21? Another quote, straight out of the Bible. Have you heard it said that to the people long ago, you shall not murder? Sure. And everyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. And anyone who says, you fool, will be in, in danger of the fire of hell. So, on Judgment Day, you stand before God and based on just the commandments I went through, would you be found innocent or guilty? Destination, heaven or hell? God's standard here but you'd say, oh, won't God just forgive me? He, he's a loving God. Well, God is just. Justice must prevail. The punishment is death. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. It's not as if we, it's not as though we're weak people and we fall easily. No, we're rebels. We're rebellious. We go out there and say, no, I'll do my own thing. Thank you. We know what is right, but we say no to God. We say no to his law. We say yes to self. If God was like a judge, okay, in a courtroom, and the judge let the murderer go free, because the murderer said, who said, sorry, sorry, Your Honor, I didn't. You can imagine, imagine, try that in court and see what happens. <laughs> that would be, a, if, if, if the judge was to let him go, that would be a corrupt judge, wouldn't it? Hey, a good judge would say justice demands that you pay for your crimes. So you plead to God. Well, okay. I've tried to be a good person. Look, I was... Baptized as a child, I, I, I'd give it to charities. 
I've even come to church. I, I go to church. I believe, I believe in you, God. Yeah. So does the devil, by the way. I've driven out demons in your name. <laughs> hey, 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 well, that one. I perform many miracles in your name. I've, 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 you notice all the I's? Nothing will work because it's all I, 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 I. I. <laughs> Destination, hell, thrown into the blazing fire furnace where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew chapter 13, verse 42. You think, wow. So how can anyone get to heaven? Well, and just realize it's, it's not about trying to do better from now on, you know. God demands perfection, absolute perfection. No one is perfect. We all sin. But there is only, and there is only one way. If a sinless person offered to take your punishment, hmm, then justice would be served and you could go free. And that person was the son of God, Jesus. He took your punishment and he died. He died on the cross. Now, if he did that for you, how much punishment is left for you to take? Nothing. He took 100% of your punishment. So if he did that to you, where would you go when you die? Heaven. 100% assured you will. Not 90%. Think, oh, my, my, I hope so. No, 100%. Because Jesus took 100% of your punishment. He didn't take 90%. And you've got to work the rest of the 10%. No, he took 100 All of it. So based on this, where would you be going when, well, where would you be going? To heaven? And you would be only because Jesus took your punishment. Only. Romans 5, chapter 8. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And he offers it as a gift which you accept by trusting, by trusting that Jesus took your punishment on your behalf. Makes sense, doesn't it? So let's say today, you trust that Jesus took your punishment and then tomorrow you go and sin again. And then two hours later you die. Make it two minutes. Where would you go? Well, it's still got to be heaven because Jesus took your punishment for your future sins, all your sins, your past, the ones right now as you say to him, your future. Jesus died 2,000 years ago. He paid for all the future sins. Does that mean then think, wow, oh, get out a card free. I can just shoot, do what I like. I can get out. Well, well, hang on. Does that mean you should keep on sinning then? Well, no, no. Now, this, this analogy I'm going to use, it's great. By the way, a lot of what I'm saying today comes out of two little tracks. And there's a whole stack of them up there, and I want you to take them, okay? They're absolutely brilliant. They're put out by guys from Operation 513. I listen to them all the time. Um, they're great websites and fantastic tracks. This is one of their analogies that they use, and I'm sure they've got it from somewhere else too. It says, and this is it. Imagine you get caught in a burning fire building. It's on fire. You're overcome with smoke. You're blinded. You're coughing. And there's no way out. Doesn't look good for you, does it? No. Then a fireman comes in, grabs you by the scruff of the neck and drags you out. What would your reaction be? To slander you? No. <laughs> Tell all the others, oh, I got out of there pretty good, didn't I? Huh? I'm pretty good, eh? Yeah. <laughs> no. You would thank him. 
And then you go and tell everybody else, wouldn't you? So, yeah, you know, on TV last night, see that fire? That was me in there. The fireman came and rescued me. How good was that? The fireman rescued me. You'd want to go and share it to all your friends, wouldn't you? That's exactly the same. Yeah. You'd praise him. And, you know, it should be like that with knowing God. With knowing that, you know, knowing that, that, um, that Jesus suffered and died for your sin, do you really want to? continuing no it's like running back into the fire again isn't it <laughs> no no way not after realizing what he has done for you in fact out of gratitude i now want to live my life the way he wants me to and jesus also conquered death and and of course and by raising and he was raised back to life on the third day so to recap how do you get this forgiveness? Oh, you, can, you can't earn it. It's not by doing good deeds, going to church, praying, or, or just trying your best. We saw your best isn't the best when we looked at those commandments earlier on. But instead, it's a free gift. You must trust Jesus' death on the cross, and it's the only way. All our sins are forgiven. Not Jesus plus good works and doing good stuff, or Jesus plus uh, got to do the sacraments. No. If you're a Christian, you already know this. It's like preaching to the converted. You already know this. And know that you've been adopted into his family as sons and daughters, and, and you live with Jesus as your ruler. You know, and as saved people, you delight in keeping his word and, and doing his will and doing the will of the Father and, Father and sharing in that message. And it all, all just brings honour and glory to him. That's why we do the Ten Commandments. They show us how far we fall short. God has done something about it. Put our trust in him, Jesus' death on the cross. We're saved and we have a different life. We do the Ten Commandments because that's what God wants. Won't save us, that's already been done. All right, but but if you realize that you have been going wrong. And instead, you accept God's free gift of forgiveness and eternal life. Well, you must trust then that, that Jesus' death on the cross is the only, 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 only reason for your sins that your sins are forgiven. He paid the price, the penalty, the death. This will then cause you to repent because turning from sin is what is the right thing to do. You don't try to be really good and hope that God will accept you. That's not repentance. You don't clean up to take a bath. <laughs> do you? <laughs> Who cleans up before they have a bath? <laughs> you have your bath and get cleaned. <laughs> well, Next week, Ibrahim will preach, Greg will preach, and then Nick. And I'm not quite sure about what you're doing, Nick, but the others will definitely be going through some of these terms and going through this sort of thing again. And as I mentioned earlier, there are two tracks out the back. Please take them, reread them. And as you read them, you think, hey, Bruce just said this. <laughs> it's where I got a lot of this from, okay? This is, this is where, oh, of course, then that comes from the Bible. I'm not making it up, and they're not making it up. Yeah, Operation 513. A group of Christians, they say on the website, from different denominational backgrounds with who are passionate about fulfilling the Great Commission to preach the gospel to all nations, and that's what they do. 
I listen to them all the time, as Homer will tell you. <laughs> too much so. No, you can never be too much into God's word. So, and you think, hang on, Bruce, where were these, these um, questions and answers you were supposed to go through? <laughs> well, hopefully, those questions and answers were wrapped up there together. They did get answered, but not one by one. So thanks very much, and let's just come before our Lord and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have given us the commandments, those 10 commandments, Lord, they do show us how far we fall short. We thank you, Lord, that you also have, have given us that wonderful gift, that free gift through Jesus Christ, our faith in him, that we acknowledge, Lord, that Jesus took our punishment on the cross, trusting in him. We can be given that gift of, of acceptance by you, that we have been forgiven and we are given eternal life. And I hope, Lord, that as we acknowledge that, that we can live a life that is pleasing to you and that with your spirit living within us that we can do what is right by living your way, by following the Ten Commandments as it is the right way to live. And it does bring honour and glory to you, Lord. So we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Bruce. I'm going to have to add a few more references to my sermon. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. I enjoyed that. Um, okay. I don't know. I think we seem to be lesser in number. Oh, yeah, the Dunn family. Yeah, the, um, the words up there will be running backwards and forwards too much but anyway let's pray first uh, let's give thanks for for the offering and our collection almighty god we ask that you grant this collection be dedicated to your service and be used for your glory and the good of the church and people here at saint mary's through jesus christ our lord amen stay safe everybody i hope you um can avoid the the lurgy although i don't know Nicer one, not that one. <laughs> uh, let's say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and all of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you. Have a good week.